Good evening. Welcome to tonight's video. I do hope you are enjoying the series as I record this. Currently, I am almost complete writing the finale of the Paranormal FBI. I did go through a period of sadness, in a way, where it was the end of a story and I loved working on it so much, but everything has to come to an end every now and then. Without further ado, here is part 9 of PFBI. Hey there. Feels like some time has passed. My head feels like it's getting worse. Each pulse of my heartbeat causes a wave of pain. Kinda wish I had more of that liquid stuff from before. Anyway, I'm sure you're not just reading this for my agitated ramblings. I've gone through all of the files from the safe. About a fifth of them are printed Reddit posts from this hunter. I took the time and put them on Reddit. Another fifth are some scriptings I have barely any memory from, even though they're labeled with my credentials. The other 60% is a collection of files numerically ordered. Each of them have the letters PHI on the corners. Project Hunters International is my best guess. The files themselves look to be a collection of mostly humanoid beings called Subject. I found George's file amongst them as well. He seems pretty damn human to me. There was also an elderly woman bearing striking resemblance to Selena. That file had an envelope attached to it, which I set aside to read later. Hell, I found the current CEO listed here his bodyguard, and a scary-looking monster thing that shared the name of the beast. One face caught my attention, one that caused my mind to burn with pain. A gorgeous woman with red and white hair. She felt familiar. I couldn't remember why. I set the files down and held my head in my hands. I needed answers and only one idea to start from. I reached out to Onyx and asked him to find out what he knew about PHI. While I waited, I found the oldest scripting. Here's what it read. June 13th, year redacted. We finally found our target, Franklin Redacted, otherwise known as Scotch, an ex-hunter who abandoned his duties quite some time ago one who has encountered quite a few individuals we are after. His capture was easier than we had expected, considering his experience. Our arrival on their property held hardly any troubles. No hidden mines, no explosives on the doors and windows, no scarred man armed to the teeth ready to fight us off. Instead, the house was defenseless. Inside was a man confused and terrified at our presence, petrified in his chair. He hardly put up a fight as we brought him in for interrogation. However, our efforts seemed pointless. After countless hours of questions, threats, torture, and deal offers, he's yet to give us any information we were after. This document is our last hope of getting any answers out of him. Scotch sat at the end of the chrome table. He was covered in scars and bruises. His eyes were puffy and dark from his lack of sleep. Sitting across from him was the CEO, an elderly woman in business attire. She seemed fed up with the amount of progress. Her eyes stared daggers into Scotch. She tried to find any sign to use to her advantage. Franklin, I'm tired of this. I'm more than certain you are as well. This can all stop. You can go back to the life of comfort, if you help me." Scotch sounded empty and defeated as he spoke. I can't help you. I believe you can. I need you to tell me where he is. I don't know where. I don't even know who the hell it is you're talking about. Your son, Franklin. You agreed to raise him for 18 years. That was the deal. Where is he? I don't have a son. 
The chrome table flew towards the wall adjacent from the window. Scott began to float in midair. Soon after, he was flung into the wall, being held in place by some unseen force. The CEO stood up and began to walk calmly towards him. Eighteen years ago, I spared your life. You agreed to give him to us once that time was up. It would make sense for you to protect him, expected of his father. Now tell me where he is, Franklin. I... I'm not Franklin. Really? Because you look and sound a lot like him. You've got the wrong guy, I swear, he said as tears began to fall from his face. Oh? Then do you mind telling me who you are? I'm Jedediah. I've lived in Idaho for the last two decades after my wife passed. I've been trying to tell you for weeks. You've got the wrong guy. Scotch looked feeble, old and vulnerable. A far cry from the hunter he had been before. So it's true then. You really did erase your memories. All to protect your son. I had to be absolutely certain. She released Scotch from the wall. He slumped over into unconsciousness. Her gaze focused on the window. Clean and heal him up. I want him working for us when he awakes. There's a chance his memories might resurface. Be a dear and keep an eye on him, would you, Fred? I looked into her eyes through the glass, nodding my head in understandment. I just hope everything we've done and will do will be productive. What the fuck? I... What? I, I'm sorry, but this has thrown my mind into a tailspin. I straight think can't update you all do when I can sentence, right? Then until I'm friendly guy PFBI. Well, it is a shorter part. I don't recall exactly what was going through my mind as I was writing this one, but I did think it was necessary to bring in a couple elements of furthering, advancing the story at this point. But I do hope you enjoyed. Uh, as of recently, I mean a month, two months, still recent to me, whatever. It's not been a year, so it's still recent. I have created a Patreon. As of recording this, I have two patrons, Pimp Demon and Lycan Trucker. To those two, I am absolutely grateful for their donations that they've chosen to give me, which confuses me at times, honestly, but nonetheless, I'm very grateful. Uh, I will leave my Patreon link in the description. It's you don't have to. It's a choice, an option. I'm very appreciative, but I'm grateful you're even here listening to this part. I'd like to give a huge thank you to Azarine Fox, or also known as Miss Creepeth. She started out recently as a horror narrator, which I believe I met her at HorrorCon, and her narrations have quite been interesting from what I've heard. I've, I was actually taking part in one of her recent uh, Christmas stories. I played the role of a maniacal laughing clown. Go figure. Uh, it was enjoyable. A bit scary doing that part, if I'm being honest. And yes, I really do enjoy collabs like this. Having people record voices for me, me recording voices for others. I, I love it. But, with all that said, thank you for being here and listening. I do wish you a fantastic rest of your day, night, evening, afternoon, morning, whatever day or time of day it may be for you. And do remember, there's so much more we've yet to understand in this world. <laughs>